Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 14th. If you got a chance to watch any of the CES coverage, I did recommend at least trying out Spike TV. Ended up being very disappointing, about two-thirds fluff and about one-third actually showing off gadgets. It was a lot of Hollywood 20-something people trying to look and act cool for the camera and just not as much substance as I would have liked. So they are also going to be the E3 coverage and I think I'm going to end up skipping that if they're uh, going to do the same kind of coverage they did before. Still, I uh, have been very happy with the coverage. I gave you the link to Revision 3 and also that's their channel name, Revision 3 on YouTube. Also, Wachuka guy, Chuck, my friend, sent in and reminded me about Twit, T-W-I-T, that is on YouTube. That's their channel name too. It's uh, Leo Laporte, basically his network plus coverage of the CES and it is every bit pretty close to as good as Revision 3. I would say Revision 3 is in the lead with a close uh, second place by Twit coverage and then and that's still up there on YouTube posted so you can see it at any time. If you missed the Spike TV well you just missed it but you didn't miss really much. This next article I have never had so many people actually send me in this article at the same time within 24 hours I think I had three people send it in. Uh, Desmosa DC Alice 54 Shadow and Cuca Rider. I'm going to give you the version from SpaceDaily.com. It's the title to the article is Pentagon Based Time Cloak Stops the Clock. If you can picture this, it would be similar, and they even talk in the article about this too. If you could somehow take light and split it up just like you do cars at a railroad crossing, obviously traffic stops for the railroad crossing, and then later on down the road, the traffic joins up again as the cars behind speed up, so you never actually know a train passed by if you're looking on down a ways. Well, they evidently have a way now to do it with light beams, although it's done on a very, very short time scale. I mean, we're talking nanoseconds here, so I don't picture this, even if it's fully developed, being able to cloak anything at normal distances. Just for example, something a kilometer away takes about, uh, I think, three microseconds to reach your eye, so they would have to, anything they would want to get away with and not have you see, it would have to be less than that amount of time so that they could interrupt the light beam and then rejoin it back together again. Still, it's an interesting device, and I think the main thing they're talking about is not cloaking in the way we think of it as, uh, as if you're trying to hide something somebody's doing, but mainly to be used in optical fibers for data bits because they actually travel at the kind of speeds where something like this could actually be of use, both to good guys and bad guys. So if you get a chance, check out the article. Um, also, Baker46 sent me in an article. It's kind of interesting if you get a chance to read it. I don't know if many people know what quasi-crystals are, but scientists were debating years ago about whether quasi-crystals were even something that existed very much in nature because uh, the difficulty it was to actually make them in the lab. A quasi-crystal, if anybody wants to know first, the definition of a crystal is molecules that are all basically the same, like a, and then they form a lattice work. Each one has a, a little crystalline structure itself, like say a, a six-sided type of molecule, and they're all joined together in a lattice work. Well, quasi-crystals are the same type of little crystalline structures, but none of them are actually identical to each other. They're similar, but not identical, and they join up to form a as they call it, a quasi-crystal. Well, they found this chunk of meteorite that's about 4.5 billion years ago, and have found out that in outer space it doesn't seem to be that uncommon to be able to find a quasi-crystal substance. I don't really know what any practical application, other than just for research at this time, or um, there may be something, if any of you guys know what quasi-crystals are actually used for at this time, or uh, why they are developing technology, uh, please share it in the comments, or even make a video reply. I would really appreciate that. And uh, last up this week, I didn't get a chance to get to it uh, on my last TDD report. And thank you, everybody, for joining in and uh, talking about organ donation and the fact that you are organ donors. If you didn't see it, catch last week's show. Uh, it's uh, a really good message. It's mostly not my show. It's mostly about my friend Bill. But uh, this week, I'm going to have my friend Jake Evil Clown join me at the very end. He was traveling around in Florida in his area where he lives and he spotted somebody. This this is a person he said he actually knows and he may be able to get an interview but uh, check out this little cart this guy is kinda custom built it's kinda cool. So take care everybody and I will catch you next week. Oh, you gotta check this out. There's a kid in here. I think it's a little kid. It might be a guy. I don't know. No, it's a man. There's somebody inside that. 
it, there it goes. It's moving now. It's a shark. It's all aluminum. It's awesome, man. Look at this thing. I gotta go up to the next road and catch him up here. It's oh man, it is so killer. It's got a little plate on the front that says something.